Hello everyone. Good evening. Welcome to an interesting session I have lined up today. It will be a short session and it is going to discuss some of the important scoring systems and classifications in surgery. Now you all know year after year they have started giving more and more weightage to such kind of topics. Last year in NEET PG there were a lot of questions where they discussed some of the other scoring system, some criteria, some classification or asked you to calculate something. This has happened a lot in the recent past. Last few years, even in the AIMS paper or the INI CAT, these things have been brought into practice. So today I will just give you an idea of the kind of scoring system, the kind of classifications on which questions are commonly asked. While people are joining in, let me tell you a little bit about myself. I am Dr. Amrit Nasta. I am your surgery educator on the Unacademy platform. If you wish to learn more from me, please download the Unacademy learning app. On this app, you can follow me on my profile where you will get regular updates about my upcoming classes. A lot of interesting classes coming up in February. So do join in for them. Some will be free classes, some will be on plus subscription. On the app, apart from me, there are a lot of wonderful educators covering different different subjects. So if you are targeting NEET PG 2021 or 2022, definitely this is the place where you should be. Those of you who are appearing for NEET 2021 in April, recently a batch course has just started. Okay, that is your last mile NEET PG 2021 batch. So it has just started, it is a short batch where they will comprehensively cover all the subjects. So a lot of different different educators are going to cover different different subjects which will help you. Remember, use my referral code 10surgery. If you apply this referral code, you will get a 10% discount on whatever subscription model you take. Okay, so if you are targeting need PG, I think a 3 month subscription will be ideal. You use my referral code 10surgery. And that will get you a 10% discount on whatever subscription model you take. Alright. So, I hope to see you guys on the platform. Also, please follow me on the Unacademy app. You will get a lot of updates about my upcoming free classes also. So, with that in mind, all those of you who are online, please message in the chat box. So, I know that you are with me. I hope you guys can see me and hear me clearly. So this will be an MCQ pattern class. We will discuss some important scoring systems, some classifications. And then you will get an idea of the kind of questions they ask. I have taken a special class already on an academy, a free life class on scoring systems. So those of you who are appearing, I advise you after this class also go through that one. Taki a lot more scoring systems will be covered. All brought together in one place. So you have to do one and Because when you study one system and you move on to the other, you forget what you did. And there are so many subjects and so many systems, it's not really possible. How much can we study? Right? So at least our life will become a little easy if we have all things, at least in surgery, in one place. That is the idea. So all our classification systems should be in one place. So let's begin with the first question. So this question is on polydocal cyst according to Todani classification. So today's class is all about classification systems and scoring systems. So according to Todani classification of polydocal cyst, diffuse type extrahepatic comes under which category? Diffuse extrahepatic comes under which category? Is it colloidal cyst type 3, 4a, 4b or 5? Which classification or which type of colloidal cyst is categorized as diffuse extrahepatic? Is it type 3, 4a, 4b or 5? Now obviously to answer a question like this which looks very easy on the face of it we always make some some or the other silly mistake, right? So we need to know an easy way of remembering the Todani classification, which I'll show you. So how do we remember? What is first we need to know? Yes, there are five classes. And in the fourth, there is 4A, 4B and there is 5. Everybody remembers type 1. This is the most common type. Okay, this is your Sacular or cystic type. 
okay this is your secular or cystic type type 2 is diverticular type what is type 3 yeah type 3 is a little unique is it the diffuse type so type 3 is called as cholidophysil it is called cholidophysil now what is unique about type 3 it is also called as the intra duodenal type it is also your intra duodenal type the treatment of type 3 is different compared to the others 4a and 4b are your diffuse types they are both diffuse diffuse 4a is combined a is for and okay so a for and it is intrahepatic plus extrahepatic this is where we will get confused right what is 4a 4b just remember a for and or so 4a is intra plus extrahepatic so obviously 4b will remain only extrahepatic and 5 will remain only intrahepatic everybody knows 5 that is what is the other name for type 5 yes type 5 is also called what which is your intrahepatic type yes please write in the chat box so type 5 or intrahepatic type also called as Caroli's disease so coming back to the question what type is this diffuse extrahepatic answer is 4b right so diffuse extrahepatic becomes 4b just we always get confused what is 4a and 4b remember a for and that's all you need to remember okay a for and us then you'll remember 4b and 5 automatically <clears throat> so this was my type 1 where only the cbd is dilated type 2 there is a lateral diverticulum type 3 this is a unique one i was telling you what is the treatment of type 3 also called as cholidophysil red intraduodenal or cholidophysil yes what is the treatment of type 3 so here the treatment is simple you do ercp plus sphincterotomy basically when i do the sphincterotomy the cholidocal cyst starts draining it improves the drainage of the cholidocal cyst okay it improves the drainage of the cholidocal cyst 4a 4b 5 they are difficult to treat okay they require wide accession liver transplant or complex reconstruction these are difficult uh, if the person has an incidentally detected type 1 cholidocal cyst incidental means asymptomatic then what will you do incidentally diagnose cholidocal cyst do i have to treat it do i have to remove it yes what is the treatment incidentally detected type 1 cholidocal cyst do i have to resect or i can leave it there if the person is not having any problem so remember cholidocal cyst are pre-malignant because they are pre-malignant you have to always resect okay because they are pre-malignant you have to always resect except type 3 type 3 chodge baki sare mein aapko resection karna padega depending on the extent of the cyst that much resection and reconstruction that will be the simplified treatment of all types of cholidocal cysts are we clear on this okay this is one of my favorite questions it's an interesting one uh, 100 percent you in one of your exams you will get a question on severity of acute pancreatitis take them expected topic there are so many severity systems in earlier days there was ranson glasgow now they have moved on to modified atlanta bicep so which of these is not a component which of these is not a component of bicep score is it gcs age more than 60 years sgot or fever with tachycardia i have asked you not a component aise type ke question aane wale severity systems of acute pancreatitis golden topics at least either in neat or in ini cat fmg somewhere or the other they will ask you so what is this bicep 
So I will give you the answer, but let us understand what is the score and then I'll give you the trick to remember. Now first things first, please remember bicep, there are two things. One is bicep tells you the components. That is the mnemonic. But the components are not what the name is. The name of the scoring system is bedside index. Bedside index for severity of acute pancreatitis. Okay, so if they ask you what is bicep, then don't tell the full form of bicep, means don't tell the components. The components make the mnemonic. What you will tell? It stands for bedside index for severity of acute pancreatitis. It is a pancreatitis severity scoring system. What are the components? B is BUN, more than 25. You don't need to remember the number, just BUN is enough. I stands for what? What does the I stand for? ISAP. Yeah, anybody? Quite a few of you are online. Yes, you can write in the chat box what does I stand for? So I stands for impaired mental status. Impaired mental status, which can also be calculated by GCS. No, not INR. It's not INR, it is impaired mental status. S stands for what? S stands for what? S stands for SIRS. Okay. S stands for SIRS. A stands for age. More than 55 years. And P stands for plural effusion. Okay. P stands for plural effusion. Now coming back to the question. GCS to hair component, age more than 60 years hair component, SGOT is not a component. What is this fever with tachycardia? What does that mean? How can this be a component? I can't have fever with tachycardia. So remember, this fever with tachycardia means SIRS. They will not put SIRS as a clear cut option. They will put fever with tachycardia something like that or they'll give you pulse rate more than 90 with fever or with wbc count as such they will give you they will not give you sirs as one option and they will give you sgot sgot is used in which uh, severity system of acute pancreatitis sgot is a part of any severity system so remember sgot is in ransom score or ransom criteria Okay, remember this Ransom's criteria, Jota, there are two parts. One is on admission and one is after 48 hours. So on admission, there are five things, one of which is SGOT. And then there are criteria at 48 hours, one of which is BUN. Okay, I'm just giving you a correlation so that you have an idea of what are the different scoring systems. There are many scoring systems of severity one of which is Ranson, old one. Now they use BICEP because it is bedside. Okay, you don't need too many tests to identify the BICEP score. Uh, when do I say BICEP score is significant? How many of these should be present to label someone as severe acute pancreatitis because it's a severity score. So how many of these should be present to be labeled as severe BICEP? Yeah. How many should be present? So if out of these five parameters, if he has three or more, that will be labeled as severe acute pancreatitis. Okay, if any three of these are present or more, it becomes severe. Any other advantage of BICEP score compared to the other scores like modified Atlanta and all those? What is the main advantage of BICEP score apart from the fact that it is bedside? So the other advantage is this can be done at admission. Okay, this can be counted at admission means I don't have to wait for 48 hours. Almost all the other scoring systems of acute pancreatitis, you have to wait for 48 hours. Whether it's modified Atlanta, whether it's Ranson, whether it's Glasgow, CRP status, all of them require you to wait. CT severity index, 72 hours. This gives you whenever you want. You, it is replicable. You can keep doing it every day. 
and it is a bedside index easy to calculate okay this is one expected question abhi tak in this pe koi sawal aaya nahi hai so this is important this is expected they have not yet asked any question on this okay and this is there in your bailey and love okay this is there in bailey so which of these criteria is a feature of tokyo grade 3 cholecystitis grade 3 cholecystitis when will you label it as grade 3 cholecystitis yes wbc more than 18000 gangrenous gallbladder perforated gallbladder or organ failure in which of these will you label the person as having grade 3 cholecystitis today we are only going to discuss all these kind of things scoring systems staging systems severity scores so you know that these are the kind of things which we need to focus on and an easy way to remember like i told you todani how do you differentiate 4a 4b 5 and bicep just like that tokyo yeah is it wbc more than 18000 gangrenous gallbladder perforated gallbladder or organ failure okay answer is <clears throat> organ failure now you will wonder cholecystitis how will that lead to organ failure obviously it will only lead to organ failure if it gets complicated and because of that complication the person gets sepsis only when there is sepsis there will be organ failure uh in which other scoring system is organ failure the marker of severity yeah in which other scoring system is organ failure the marker of severity like here i am saying i am calling it grade 3 only if there is organ failure so in which other scoring system do i count organ failure as a marker of severity so remember when i do scoring system for acute pancreatitis like i have bicep i have a scoring system called modified atlanta even in modified atlanta if i want to label someone as having severe acute pancreatitis if i want to label someone as having severe acute pancreatitis he should have persistent organ failure persistent organ failure is the only criteria to label someone as having severe acute pancreatitis okay then what about all these wbc they also are markers of severity but they become grade 2 okay only organ failure is grade 3 obviously organ failure will happen in the setting of one of these when the gangrene gallbladder become gangrenous or perforates and you get peritonitis that only will lead to most of the times grade 3 so this is what is there in bailey severe means organ failure moderate or grade 2 means any bad local complications if you notice this is very similar to atlanta classification wo bhi aisa hi hai atlanta classification for acute pancreatitis is very similar severe there was persistent organ failure persistent organ failure moderate there was again the same local complications pseudocyst acute fluid collection necrosis or transient organ failure that was the only different thing over here transient organ failure and if none of that is present it is grade 1 okay basic level question alvarado score alvarado score which is used in acute pancreatitis which of these components is given two points which of these components is given two points yeah migratory pain tenderness rebound tenderness or shift to left alvarado score also given by the mnemonic mantral mantrals so which of these components is given two points in alvarado score migratory pain tenderness rebound tenderness or shift to left next step will be they will give you a scenario and you have to calculate the mantral score or the alvarado score 
So Kostov is saying B, that is absolutely correct. Tenderness in the right iliac fossa, which is the other component, which is given two points. So M is migratory pain. A is anorexia. N is nausea. T is tenderness, yes, which is the other component given two points. R is rebound tenderness. E is elevated temperature or fever. L is leukocytosis. And S is shift to left. Excellent leukocytosis. So tenderness and leukocytosis. They are given two two points. Everything else is given one one point. And that will become you will get a total score of 10. So there are these eight points. Two things are given two points. Everything else is given one point. You get a total score of 10. When do I say mantral is significant? Significant score. Mantral is significant. Or a mantral score greater than what tells me that the person should undergo appendicectomy. What should be the mantral score? To label someone as acute appendicitis and he should undergo an appendectomy, it should be 7 or more. In the time of the application of this score is limited because of course instead of doing the Alvarado score you might as well do ultrasound or CECT and then you see is it acute appendicitis or not so costo it's not 9 it is mental 7 okay 7 or more means it is severe enough to be labeled as acute appendicitis and it should be operated indications for appendectomy based on Alvarado score mental score more than 7 Okay, last question of the day, interesting one, yaad sak pucha nahi hai. Fontaine classification and Rutherford classification is used in. Fontaine classification and Rutherford classification is used in. Grading of varicose veins and its complications, grading of lymphedema, severity of PVD, site of vascular block in lower limb. Yeah. Fontaine and Rutherford. This is there not in Bailey. This is only in Sabaston. Bailey mein nahi hai. This is given in Sabaston. So if they want to put a difficult level question, it will be something like this. Thoda high level question. Yeah. Severity of PVD. Grades of lymphedema. Mm -hmm. Akanksha Nag, you have come very late in the day. Um, this is the last question of the day. Kosto also says severity of PVD. Excellent. That is right. Severity of PVD. Earlier, there was a clinical score. I will tell you what that was. Okay, easy clinical score. But a more accurate grading is Fontaine and Rutherford. They are both different. Huh? Don't know. I will show you what they are. What is the grading of varicose veins and its severity called? What is this grading? Grading of varicose veins and its complications is called what? It's called CEAP score. Grades of lymphedema is given by what? Clinical grading of lymphedema. Anybody? That is called Brunner's grades. Okay. Site of vascular block in lower limb ka kuch grading nahi hai. But there is a scoring system or a treatment system based on the site. What is that called? Whether I should do angioplasty, whether I should do bypass, what bypass I, sh I should do based on site of block what is that called whose guidelines tell me depending on the anatomy of the block what should be the treatment yes this is again Savaston. Oh, oh oh nobody i should have put that but that's a little high level that is difficult level question it's called t a s c Trans-Atlantic Society Severity. Okay. Trans-Atlantic Society Score. It tells you, so it basically talks about where is the block? What is the anatomy of the block? What is the size of the block? Is it short segment block, long segment block? And what should be the treatment? Whether I should put a stent, whether I should do a bypass in PVD. Okay, mainly for abdominal aortic and large vessel blocks. That is called TSC. Alright, severity. These are the two classifications I was talking about. One is Fontaine. 
other is rutherford they are all clinical okay they are all clinical we don't need to we don't need to know what they exactly stand for they are subjective they are not very objective okay they are subjective a uh, easier way of classifying which was used clinically in older times was boyds but remember boyds is only intermittent claudication so i just wanted to give you the perspective that boyds score was only for intermittent claudication this goes beyond intermittent claudication so like you have 1 2 3 1 2 3 boyds also had 1 2 3 stages of intermittent claudication mild moderate severe rest pain in boyds was not counted okay there was no rest pain rest pain was not boyds for boyds was only intermittent claudication and of course complications are not counted they are included in fontaine and rutherford we don't need to know the stagings we just need to know the names and the difference okay so that was a glimpse on some of the scoring systems in surgery i have taken a class on on academy it's a special class a free class where i have discussed a lot of scoring systems you can go through it if you wish it's a lot of scoring systems brought together usme maine chicago then uh, forest classification johnston classification bahut sare scores maine discuss kiye uh breslo and so on so you can go through that class here i have put a few different ones there i have used more it is a one hour class you can go through that it's a free class it's on my app it's on my profile so you follow my profile you look for special classes you will get that class also please follow me on the unacademy need pg live youtube channel and on my telegram channel you will get regular updates about my upcoming special classes my next special class is tomorrow evening it will be a previous year question class in detail it will be a long one one and a half hour class so please join me for that i will update and i will publish it very soon it will be in the evening around 6:30 7 in the evening tomorrow if you wish to learn more from me on the plus platform please use my referral code 10 surgery okay that will get you a 10% discount so hope you guys enjoyed this class those of you who came late please go through the questions that i have taken take care guys have a good day study well and i hope to see you again tomorrow for my next class